All right, welcome back everybody to more Road Warden. So I'm gonna go ahead and get right into it. It's been, uh, uh, I think mid-July is when I last recorded, but I'll see how this goes. He slowly starts to speak, making his making sure his tripod don't eavesdrop. His soul is clouded. He thinks we have no right to waste what the dead have sacrificed for our sake. And that we respect them, uh, disrespect them by staying weak. But all of it is just a cloak that hides him. He cares not about respect, but about his guilt. It takes a bit of convincing before he explains what he means by that. Our father died from claws, our mother from a bad birth. We used to have five brothers and sisters, all of them dead now. Some may be could have been saved, but not all, and certainly not by being stronger. Yet, Efron keeps thinking he had every opportunity to fix the tragedies, and he's to blame for letting them down. Him and I both, he fell silent, but at least I put my shame to use. He reaches for his tools again. We already have everything that we need, a beautiful home, enough food, fewer beasts than ever. It's going to be a rough lifetime for us, he takes a swing, but our kids will be fine. Okay, let's see. How about about the Eastern Path? Oh, did you face any troubles? I'll let you know. Okay, my my quest is to take care of something or other. Let's see. I imagine being a carpenter in this part of the realm isn't easy. You have a healthy imagination. He rests his elbow on the workbench and smiles. I have patience, and I'm getting better with the tools. And these are some sorry tools. He says, singingly, and it's hard to disagree with him. They have been used for many years, with only the wooden parts being somewhat in shape, since they seem to have been recently replaced. The steel chisels and saws are jagged and dull. The hammers and axes are made of stone. Some of them were brought here by the settlers, and we can't buy any more right now. There's work to be done, but I do have a plan. You ask him to explain, and he's all too eager to do so. He enters the nearby house and shows you his more successful works, each of which has some shortcomings, noticeable even to a layperson. A bowl engraved with fish was poorly planned, with animals too large to fit into the entire space, and so a part of it is blank. A simple relief of two naked people in their embrace looks almost believable, but the legs are in one case too long and in the other too short. One chair has a broken leg and the remaining three so that they are a bit too ambitiously saved, and got dangerously thin. The chest seems fine, but equipment sticks out of it, and the man acknowledges that he wrongly estimated the required size. So you want to be an artist? Better. I want to turn pots, cups, weapons, cupboards, everyday stuff into things of beauty. Seeing your look, he's pats his stomach. I know I'm far from mastering it, but trust me, these are so much better than the ones I did this winter. And I started only three years ago. Huh. His pride makes him look even bigger, especially in soldiers. There aren't many carpenters in the peninsula. Folks do things for their own use, but I will be a specialist. It's the city thing. Foggy told me so. Not just a jointer, but someone who does only a few things but better than others. The tribe supports me with food and time and I'll pay them back with the dragon bones, and prettier houses. When he leads you outside, you start to share some of his excitement, but most of it dwindles at away after you sit down at his workbench again, on wobbly stools, surrounded by broken planks and crude tools. Hmm. I need a wooden lantern, one useful for an adventurer. Dreaming of caves and treasures? He glances at the nearest pile of planks. I should have some glue and leather to spare, but making a lantern would take me half a day, and I've got a lot of sawing ahead. He points at a broken chair behind him with his thumb. Excuse me. If you really need it, friend, you can give it a try. I'll lead you through the difficult steps, but it'll take us almost half a day. It's too late for that. Dang it. It's already nighttime, actually. I'll let you know when I'm ready. No hurry, believe me, he chuckles. Okay. And that was me talking to Ayla the carpenter. It's
It's actually really late. Can I seek shelter? It's too dangerous to stay here. You can't sleep here, but there's still time to travel to a safe place. To Foggy Lake. Okay, let's go there. Yeah. Alright, I'll come back here the next day and get that lantern. The screeching birds are sitting on the logs of the palisade. Some of them observe you, but their group doesn't cease to its squabbling. The tavern's windows and doors are open, and a bunch of furs are spread over the fence. We're fighting bugs, says the sorter man when he sees your look. Huh. Can I just go to sleep? Or can I go inside first? How much how many of those things do I have? I have three. I think I'll have to save or uh let me think. This is Numa, right? Pretty sure. And getting better health, it would be a good idea. I definitely need that. Okay, paint. Oh, okay. So I either pay... Yeah, let's pay the two rations then. Because I seem to have a very uh, deep stomach for emptiness. Alright. Time to sleep. As you prepare your belongings, you, rela you realize that the days are getting noticeably shorter. The closer you get to autumn, the less time you'll have to before the beasts of the night leave their lairs. For now, it won't be that bad, but I better make sure not to not waste too many hours. The monstrous thoughts wake you up. The night is bright, and from the window of the tavern, you have a good look at the yard. A few massive dragonlings are exploring the courtyard, knocking over a wooden tools with their tails, putting their noses into buckets and underneath the stairs. You can't five of them so far, but you can't see the air entire area at once. One of them spots your look and moves closer. Still, it doesn't try to climb to the, do to the door. Maybe it's experienced enough to know it won't get through. Huh. I actually am surrounded by a bunch of people, so maybe I'll just go back to sleep. I scoff and leave the door, the solder open. Stupid lizard. <laughs> Surely nothing happened. The days are getting shorter. Oh no. I think I have to click on it, don't I? Yes. Listening to the grunts of the annoyed soda owl makes you feel uneasy, but at least the furs covering the floor are helping you relax. You don't even notice when it's already morning. And while the smell coming from the lower floor is not inviting, at least it's not you who has to take care of it. Foggy turns toward you and waits for you to speak. Do I? Would I like to eat? I have a free meal, don't I? Let's see. Uh, I should wait until I'm hungrier. So time for me to go. Short is observing the movement on the lake. Let's go back to the other place. I think I might still need. Oh, uh, what was the place? It was this place, Creeks. Yeah. Let's go here. Let's go back to Efren and look into putting together that thing. Let's see. A few scantily clad people are standing on the bridge, greeting you as you ride by. On your way to the gate, a flock of sparrows takes off from the road, landing either on the watchtower or on the tree to your right. Ayla. Let's see. He's rounding a block of wood. Excuse me. Preparing a future club. He waves to you with a chisel. Hi there, friend. I saw you taking a liking to our village. I have time now. Want to help me build a lantern? He spares you a shrug. If you really need it, friend, you can give it a try. I'll lead you through the difficult steps, but it will take us almost half a day. Let's get to it. Wow, I'm super hungry now. <laughs> Cutting and shaping the slats seems to go on without end, and while Ella's instructions helps you keep your hands safe, the blunt, jagged tools are merciless. You have little to sew after the first hour, and the carpenter puts his own work aside. At such a pace, you'll have to return to this tomorrow. Let's try something different. He leads you into a chamber, storing all of his projects, most of them crooked or half-completed, and invites you to search through. A chest filled with wooden discs, 
boards and rods, with even more trash stored behind it. Some of them must be salvageable. His chuckle carries a hint of irritation, but indeed, you both leave the room with many pieces that will take little hardly any sign. Their remaining adjustments still present a challenge, but having the locals to check and a warm nettle tisane, 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 always at hand, you stick the last piece of parchment to the frame much sooner than you expected. Alright, so now I have the thing I need. See you later. Now let's see, we've already lost a whole lot of the day. Let's just go talk to people then. Because... I think I want the full day before I do that quest. Uh, it's quest, right? Yeah, quests. Check on old pagos? No. Support ruined village. A fallen tree. To the east. Okay, look for Ephrenda Hunter. I might be able to get some free food. Whoops, I shouldn't change my position so close to the. You find him jogging along the tree creek next to a small forest. With a heavy bag on his back. Whoops. Okay, you find him jogging along the creek next to the small forest. With a heavy bag on his back. Once you get closer, he nods politely. What do you think of, about Ella? He repeats your question, making sure he, read it, he heard it correctly. I respect him. He took good care of me as an older brother. Our tale isn't an easy one, so I'd rather keep it to ourselves before you blurt something back to him. Okay, are you the only hunter around? But of course, there's... He takes a suspiciously long pause. Seven of us. In the whole tribe? The tribe, okay, maybe... Huh. Only seven people in the tribe? The tribe is small. We have enough food without daily trips. If we catch too much meat, it spoils. So it's better to let the animals feel safe. You try to change the topic, but the man suddenly looks around and lowers his wolf's head. Well, there's just one issue. Three of my friends left the village just a few days ago, and they haven't returned yet. But they should. Ella is growing worried. Why do you think these hunt other hunters aren't back yet? He walks around, from time to time looking at you with an open mouth, not sure how to start. He takes off his heavy cloak and looks to you in the eyes. They left for a few days to seek and kill some big game, each of them a different one. Then bring all of them for me to, to judge. His confidence voice falters when he mentions his own part. The winner would have caught me the prey of the greatest size, rarity, utility, and of the greatest threat. He turns away and lowers a wolf's mouth. Hmm. Tell me more about those three. They are hunters and fighters, but also close friends. If one of them was in trouble, the others would have done all they could to help. They've been a team for years, and we're planning to start a family this winter, you know? Their last big adventure before Dahlia's belly locks her at home. Okay, so maybe Dahlia is one of those who went hunting. He gives you quite a tale of their deeds and features. Dahlia is the bravest of them, with strong legs. She has simple ways and looks for beasts in the open, by their roads. Her hair is light, always tied in a single braid. Admon is a man who seeks paths and challenges. He believes that seeking knowledge of the peninsula will bring the tri tribe ways to survive hardships. He was, is, smaller than the others, and knows more about dressing and wild game than any of us. His arms are small, so he often places traps. His hair is a bit darker than Dahlia's, but short, just like his beard. Vache is not a man, though they were born with a prick. And wears browns and greens to blend in with the trees. They hunt like a gargoyle, hiding among leaves, jumping at a creature when it gets close. Because of that, they often that they have often roamed in the woods, even those that are far away from the village. This sounds serious, but if you want me to look for them, I still deserve a reward, yes? Isn't helping three young, strong souls enough? Seeing your look, he raises his voice, draws his obsidian edge club, and touches his chest with it. Then I will loyally assist you, friend. For your brave deeds, you may count on me on a day of great challenge. Like the one where I have to sacrifice to that tree thing. As he lowers his weapon, he winks at you. And others will be grateful as well, you know that. 
Alright, where should I start? He looks at you as if you're slow. I would have found them myself if I knew. I let the horse take you to the other settlements. Ask there. Let's say I were to find them. What should I tell them? Have you no shred of optimism? Maybe they're fine. Just tell them to come home. We've got enough food and uh, wood and food to start the next feast. And I have a hint that an honorable guest may be welcome there. He smiles at you. And for a moment, you think you see the wolf's head wink. A wolf head's wink. Blah. Does your tribe often send lone hunters? Why not working groups? This isn't a hunt but a competition. The winner names their first child. Do they not let you get to do that our usual way? Huh. I, I've heard their arguments. You wouldn't believe how hard it is to pick a name when you have three parents. Okay. He chuckles to himself. Once the memory fades, he gets serious again. But I can't disagree with you, friend. It's the first time in many years since my tribe folk have gone on such reckless trips. And I fear it may remind us why the peninsula isn't a place for adventurers. Hmm, your assistants, huh? How about some dragon bones? They might actually be use more useful than dragon bones. I've got the other guy ready to pay me. I'll tell you if I find anything. Thanks, friend. If all you have is a tale of their dead cells, bring me something to prove it. I, a trinket, a weapon, a thing we can throw into a pyre. I'll try, okay, to find them individually. And that's that, he shrugs. Okay, yeah, I don't have too much time, so I can't really go on adventures right now. Do the hunters from Pelt of the North hinder your job? Nah, they only get closer when they chase after wounded prey. So our, so our woods stay mostly the same. You could have another village, twice our size. He glances towards the gate, halfway from here to Pelt, and there would still be more than enough game for every belly, as long as they would forge and set up farms. You ask him if he has ever considered joining professional hunters, but he takes off the wolf's head and gives it to you so you can take a better look. It's weirdly warm from the sun. That's the only wolf any of us felled in the last five years, you see. Not that we're cowards. He suddenly raises his voice. Our trade just isn't like the big game hunters. I place fish traps, put glue to catch birds, shoot rocks at rats and rabbits, when in a group we may seek roe deer or our rocks. He takes the hat back and looks at you with nostalgia. Those in the inn seek trophies, not meat, so they hunt for big beasts, ones that, you know, fight back. Our ways are different, but I like that bunch. At least they smile, unlike others in the peninsula. Hunters will always find a common tongue. Once you see enough blood and guts, you have to laugh or go crazy. Okay, let's see. Okay, about the hunters. Oh, no, that's... Okay, the hunters he's looking for. Now, what do you know about the road running through the heart of the forest? <laughs> Excuse me. I know to avoid it. Blood there. Seeing that you're waiting for a longer tail, he adjusts his heavy cloak, spend, uh, spending a good minute on making sure that you understand it's a dangerous place. You'll be better riding around it. The northern road is the safest, he concludes. After you insist that any sort of guidance may be of use, he scratches the wolf's head. Huh. I've heard from a friend that gnolls were moving there. Those very small beast folks, you know? He moves an open hand close to the, his hips, portraying the height. They'll threaten you until you give them some meat, and that's all they eat. No fruits. No, I don't know. Bones. But if, but it's the fright types that scare me the most, and there's an entire family of them. Trust me, if you ever hear the terrible scream of a human somewhere in the tree crowns, run as fast as you can. Don't seek it, and certainly don't fight it. Just ride as fast as you can. Huh. Understood. Okay, so now I'm out of time, so I'll go ahead and leave that here then. So I'll see you all next time, and hopefully this recording went well. Bye!